obviously animated and governed by a demon not granted to all men maybe this was i'm i'm not sure but maybe he was saying this because marx was constantly beating the out of other people calling them to duels and vomiting all over himself as he would stay up until 5 a.m roaming the streets of whatever big city he was in the interpretation modern interpretation of that is his dad hitting him up and being like dude like you're pretty cool but why are you using all these talents to be unhinged please stop being less unhinged and use your talents for something better let's see let's see if uh i'm kidding obviously but i'm not let's see if karl marx was even more base than we ever thought <laughs> what's karl marx's sentence by Do dr paul kengor dr paul kengor is this the same guy why, why does he have like three different life eras in the same picture holy shit half of his books are about ronald reagan this one is uh, the communist Frank Marshall Davis, a uh, pope and the president. He's obsessed with Ronald Reagan, so I'm sure the the takes are going to be awesome. God and George Bush. Communism, like the politically incorrect guide. Oh, my God. The politically incorrect guide to communism. <sighs> fucking gold okay this is this is the sacrifice i take upon my soul for you guys here listen to guys like this okay so let's see if uh, carlos marcus the fa famous uh, inventor of taking all your spoons and your houses let's see if you also believe in satanicus we don't know why he turned to atheism these poems that he wrote that were pans to to mephistopheles is that after he becomes an atheist no he's writing so the first one was 1830 Holy shit, my brother. Are we compensating for something with that tie, man? Are we compensating for something? He seven, wrote another in 1841. He wrote a bunch of them. Right. He did um, He did a uh, just a chilling play yes. called Ulanem. Yes. Um, O-U-L-A-N-E-M. And people that are watching this, if they now type into their computer Ulanem, even in Google, it'll pop up. Played by Karl Marx. Yeah. It even has a Wikipedia entry. If you click the images button, you will see. All of them are tragedies, a poetic play written by Marx in 39 during his years as a student at the age of fucking 21. <laughs> yeah, 21. Do you want to, if you want to see the shit I wrote at 21, Jesus Christ, uh, calling me a Satanist would be another play. The action takes place uh, place in a mountain town in Italy where a mysterious German stranger, all of them and his companion Lucindo arrive. Marx only completed the first act of the play. The titular character's name is an agro Manuelo, which is believed to be a reference to Emmanuel, one of the biblical names for Jesus of Christos. Let's, let's see a quote. All lost, the hour is now expired, and time stands still. The pygmy universe collapses. Soon I shall clasp eternity and howl humanity's giant curse into its ear. Eternity, it is eternal pain, death inconceivable, immeasurable. An evil artifice contrived to taunt us, who are but clockwork, blind machines wound up to be the calendar fools of time, be yeah a bunch of nerd shit classic Karl Marx stuff I love I love that he was a theater kid as well and what if we click images what there we go we did we clicked images and nothing there's literally nothing bad except this again a question was Karl Marx a satanist remove Karl Marx from the ah okay well it's International Black Scene an album by some band again Olanem albums Olanem it is a what looks like a Turkish band Sounds Turkish to me. There you go. So, boomer, boomer imbecile cretin. The reason there's satanistic shit that pops up when you write the very specific name of the play by Karl Marx is because it's a fucking Turkish... Yeah, the first solo project of, of, of one woman in, in Turkey. It's because it's a woman from Turkey that plays dark metal music. This is, this is the type of guys that uh, Jordan Peterson invites to interview. <laughs> stuff up there from like not heavy metal but like black metal groups so ulanem uh, is an the, the argument that Karl marx was a satanist is because if you find that one thing he participated in writing when he was 21 and then you google it and then you click on images you get like death metal bands from turkey <laughs> Oh God, I, 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 yeah, I love this. An anagram for Emmanuel or Manuelo. Right, So right. Marx takes Emmanuel, which is the name given to Christ, 
or Manuelo, and he flips it into this anagram called Ulanem. And it's huh. this chilling play. The main character is Lucindo, Lucindo, and uh, you just can't believe what, what, what you're reading with this play. Mm -hmm. So that, that was written later in the 18th. But why, Marx or the, or the Turkish lady? <laughs> 40, so really the prime of his writing, including the decade when he wrote the Communist Manifesto, is also the same decade uh, when he was writing these 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 poems. Wonderful and, um, and plays soldier. and plays yeah. and plays. And throughout his life, his kids and others would say, uh, "Yeah, he had a favorite line always from Mephistopheles: right, right, everything right. that exists right. deserves to perish." So that Oof. remains a part of him uh, through, throughout his life. I know that quote. Be <laughs> Because all systems need to be questioned, re-examined, destroyed, and recreated in perpetuity, in perpetuity, for that is the evolution of both the economic model and the social constructs, which we defined as normal. That is why everything needs to be destroyed in perpetuity, not because we want to blow up planet Earth, compared to you capitalists who are literally actively doing it, but because we want actual evolution criticize everything, question everything. Literally why we are not in caves anymore. Um, his son, Edgar, has a letter where he addresses his father as my dear devil, which... Yeah, and, and when, when Mark, Marx at one point was texting with Engels and they were calling each other like the Moroccan N-word, literally. They were like being edgy fucking 19th century idiots. Mark's son once wrote, yo, my dear devil, and there are Google images of a Turkish metal band when you write the about Marx's small contribution to this one theater play. These are the arguments we have for now, John. I don't know. Maybe it's playful. I don't know. Yeah. Ha, Although ha. I would never, you know, call my dad my dear devil. Mm -hmm. His wife called him. Dude, I, I literally see my dad like, oh, piece of shit. And he's like, you, you fucking disappointment. It's called being close with, with, with your parents and kind of being able to say whatever you want and them not taking it too seriously. Uh, uh, my wicked knave. I, I quote uh, Henrik Heinzen uh, referring to him as a goblin right. who tried to get, take me un, un, under his spell. Um, other cases of, of, where, of where he's using that kind of language. When Engels first met him, he describes him as this dark man from Trier, who hops and leaps and springs on his heels. The, um, the yeah, because because he was like Marx is in the uh, perpetually drunk and depressed because of the state of the world because he cared so deeply about it, and also because he was an unhinged alcoholic. But yeah, I love this. This this I love this. Uh, this I'm not even cringing because this is just he got a guy who wrote 15 fangirl uh, books about Ronald Reagan to talk about how Karl Marx is Satan. The Red Scare is back, my boys, and it is as unhinged as ever, okay? The monster of 10,000 devils, he describes him. And the letter from his father, which was written in 1837, a year, be a year before, before, his, before his father died. So his father writes to him, March 2nd, 1837. Carl, at times my heart delights in thinking of you and your fortune, and yet at times I cannot rid myself of ideas which arouse in me sad forebodings and fear when I am struck as if by lightning by the thought. Is your heart in accord with your head, your talents? Has a room for the earthly but gentler sediments which in this veil of sorrow, it's a beautiful letter in many ways, are essentially consoling for a man of feeling. And then this question from the father of Karl Marx to his, at this point, 18-year-old son. And since that heart, Karl, is... Remember 18 before he started fucking... At 18, he was a Hegelian, okay? Young Hegelians, et cetera, et cetera. Really not engaging in the, in the wider socialist discussion which he engaged much later on with Engels. Yeah. Obviously animated and governed by a demon, not granted to all men, 
maybe this was, I'm, I'm not sure, but maybe he was saying this because Marx was constantly beating the shit out of other people, calling them to duels and vomiting all over himself as he would stay up until 5 a.m. roaming the streets of whatever big city he was in. His dad literally, like the interpreta modern interpretation of that is his dad hitting him up and being like, dude, like you're pretty cool, but why are you using all these talents to be unhinged? Please stop being less unhinged and use your talents for something better. Again, the, the, like this is not even yet Karl Marx, the Gomunism. Is that demon heavenly or Faustian? Mm -hmm. Will you ever, and that is not the least painful doubt of my heart, will you ever be capable of truly human domestic happiness? Will, and this doubt has no less tortured me since I have come to love a certain person like my own child, will you ever be capable of imparting happiness to those immediately around you? By the way, the answer was no, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Well, but, I know but that, that obviously phrase, the father since, had intimations of that. Yeah, and since that heart is obviously animated and governed by a demon, not granted to all men, is that demon heavenly or Faustian? Right. That's his, his dad, adjusted to the time in which he was writing, is basically telling him, Yo, stop being such a fucking loser is a demon fucking taking over your body, you loser motherfucker, okay? And that is an argument that uh, Marx was a Satanist, indeed. <laughs> this shit is very entertaining. His dad! Yeah. And, and there's only so many of those things, I think, that a sympathetic uh, Marxist or Marxist biographer can shrug off. I mean, there's just so many states. Like I love how in a hundred years, uh, if I contribute to anything in this life and somebody's reading the messages that my dad or my mom ever texted me, such as, son, I saw a selfie in your room. It looks like you are literally living in shit, Wonderful. in a dog a sty, in soldier. a shit sty. I mean, Please subscriber. clean your goddamn fucking room. Watch a bit of Jordan Peterson. He would inspire this. And then a hundred years later, they're like, Yugopnik the Marxist famously loved a swimming in poop. He loved sitting in shit and eating it and covering himself in shit. You got like, the actual shit eater. He was really into a uh, scat play. He was very much a scat play guy. You go the scat man. Oh, scat man! Do 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 do. Dang eater! Do do do. <laughs> okay, so let's 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 attack this. Now was he a Satanist, right? Well, <laughs> that is a whole different thing that I can't personally answer. Well. Then what are we talking about? Then what are we... Wh okay, he said his dad told him that he's unhinged. I love how the thumb up comes up. There's a Turkish metal band Wonderful that soldier. comes up I mean, when you subscriber. Google one play that he wrote. And his best friend said, was basically saying, man, this guy has like heavy emotional damage. He's like the devil. And then in the end, we say we don't know if he's a Satanist. Not unreasonable to presuppose that he was a devotee of the Mephistophelian ethos. Yeah, I think that's a right. So really the question is, you know, what constitutes a Satanist? Well, someone who generates a murderous doctrine, that, that raises <laughs> questions. I mean, dead serious about that. Like, <laughs> right, right. The most murderous doctrine ever promoted in the, in the roughly Judeo-Christian context by, by a large margin. So... I would say it's incumbent on those who would defend him to describe why we wouldn't just assume that. But the, like, the... Classic JP. The part of the reason that I was so interested in talking to you was because I felt that what you documented in your book was extraordinarily telling from the psychological perspective because I know how these things work. And it, it is not something that can be overlooked that 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 was his favorite quote. Right, right. I mean, not, especially not when you understand Goethe's centrality yeah. in the German intellectual tradition. That's like having a favorite quote from Shakespeare, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's, it's not any old quote. It's the <laughs> central credo of Mephistopheles. So that's <laughs> right. extraordinarily telling. Now, okay, now I do have another... Can, can I give yeah. you a quote? Yes. So, so Robert Payne, the very serious academic, no right winger, British man of letters, the guy who really broke this first in his 1968 biography of Marx, all right? His chapter where he talks about this stuff is called, is called The Demons in his mm -hmm. Marx biography. Mm -hmm. Now, he wrote this, and I'm not saying that I endorse this. As an academic, I can't say if this is correct. There were times when Marx seemed to be possessed by demons. That's what Payne wrote. And- now, this I would at least more endorse. Marx had the devil's view of the world and the devil's malignity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he seemed to know that he was accomplishing works of evil. 
I think that gets closer to it. How? Why? Source, please. <laughs> My argument is this one guy said that Marx was accomplishing sources of evil. This is my argument why Marx is bad. Another guy said he's accomplishing works of evil. But no, let, let's, 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 let's listen to this. <laughs> now, uh, Pastor Richard Wormbrand, who wrote the famous book Tortured for Christ, and was tortured for Christ in Romanian prisons by uh, communist captors who were shouting, I am the devil, while they were torturing him. Mm -hmm. He did a book mm -hmm. called Marx and Satan. He's convinced that Marx was a Satanist and did some things ritualistically that it might have even been satanic. Mm -hmm. But I can't I can't say that. I can't endorse that. But you that. see evidence of that in his I've play. Never, I've never right. seen In yeah, terms well, of at least right. his fantasies. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. In fact, Paine even goes so far as to say, Vladimir Lenin, right? There's a statement from Lenin which said, um, when I was a teen, I broke from all religion. I took the cross from my neck and I threw it in the rubbish bin. Mm -hmm. And and Payne has a quote where not Payne, uh, Richard Wormbrand, where I think um, I think he believes that Lenin even stomped on it. He says, mm -hmm. "Well, that's a satanic ritual." I don't know. I don't know. So I would like to introduce you to something. So there's a thing called an allegory. He didn't literally take a cross off his back and put it. In the trap, fucking hell! This guy has like twenty published books. Know that it is or not, mm -hmm. but there's another case of Lenin who at least did the work of the devil. I mean, Lenin had, according to Robert Conquest, W. H. Chamberlain, the first historian of the Russian Revolution, five hundred thousand people were killed from 1917 to 1923 under Lenin, not mm -hmm. even including the Russian mm -hmm. Civil War. Mm -hmm. If that's not the devil's work, I don't know what the hell is, right? Mm -hmm. But but I think uh, what Payne said in the latter quote, the devil's view of the world, the devil's malignity, and at the very least, this identification with kind of devilish-like um, destruction, right? Tearing everything down, rebelling against the world, everything that exists deserves to perish. Mm -hmm. um, that at least... Everything that exists needs to be questioned, re-examined, and then either reinstated or smashed down for the workers have nothing to lose but their fucking chains. The whole point of the analysis of history as constant class conflict implies that there is always oppressor and oppressed and we evolve as a society when we smash the past which no longer makes sense it is the single greatest instrument of analysis of how we've gotten out of the cave how we've gotten out of slave society how we've gotten out of feudal society and how now we must smash the owner worker exploitative mechanism it is the very critique of the most painful and the most destructive idea which is continuing the status quo into literal oblivion as both our planet dies around us and we lose ourselves to a false identity of simple consumer subjects. And the fact that you're interpreting a almost religiously enlightened idea of everything that we've known might not be as true as we thought it is, as eternal destruction, if taken to its core conclusion would imply that figures such as Jesus, or that probably he cares a lot about, uh, or Muhammad, peace be upon his name, et cetera, et cetera, who came and said the interpretations of the world and society and God that came before us must be smashed and readapted and changed as similar figures to Marx as inherently destructive and what satanic. Every evolutionary, revolutionary, or spiritual leader that has ever come has always stated, I am giving an analysis of the world that has come before me that should no longer be fully supported and must be smashed, and we need to adapt another more just system, which will eventually and hopefully be readapted to in the future, when this current one no longer works for the majority of people on this planet. So if out of that context of wanting to smash the past, Marx is satanic, then de facto so is every single rebellious individual that has ever been born. Because that is what rebellion de facto is. Yes, I said de facto. <laughs> and then the ideology that he created that just happened to be responsible for the deaths of over 100 million people in the 20th century. 100 million 
You all don't like capitalism, yet you exist! iPhone, Venezuela, bottom text, 100 billion dead! <laughs> The entire, the entire video. Uh, thank you, Ramka. Thank you, Vuvuzela. 400 bits. Red Book of Communism. Victims of Communism. The victims are Hitler, Mussolini, and Tsar Nikolai II. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, more than World War I and World War II combined. So that ideology was pretty hellacious. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, yeah, to say the least. Okay, so, and I think it's very naive not to assume that the events that we described in Marx's life are not connected. Right. Yeah, right. Correct. And that, that that his economic polemics were somehow independent of his poetic imagination. Mm -hmm. It's like obviously they weren't because they wouldn't have had that motivational force. Mm -hmm. So they they were calling on dark forces. Blanco. Obviously. So because otherwise they wouldn't have compelled people in that mm -hmm. manner, especially not toward the that sort of immense sadistic murderousness and utter destructiveness. And of course, get to the hatred of God, which all the yes. communists did. So all the communists thereafter seek to ban religion. Right, right. right. Atheists. That's like, right. They're not exactly atheists yeah, because they're well, trying to stomp something out. Seem to question uh, the direct relation between capital and organized religion, which was the case in most of the places at that time which in which they instilled uh, local revolutions and were some of the greatest supporters of the reactionary cause in said places. Nothing to do with God and had everything to do with their interpretation of their relationship to capital. But obviously a lot of imbecilic fucking communists from all over the world took this to an extreme and adopted the militant atheism as a core principle of Marxism, which it, to an extent never was and never should be because even if we leave morality or the respect of other people's cultures and religious beliefs aside, it's just an impractical mode that unites people against you who would of uh, otherwise very much been supporters of your cause away from your cause it's just, it's just dummy dumb shit that's right it's not just it's not just it's not a, a neutrality that's right it's not a neutrality toward religion it's not irreligion it's not separation of church and state it is militant aggressive atheism trotsky and lenin create the league of the militant oh yeah like in absolutely every state that has ever existed in the in history of mankind where a particular ideological or religious group has always done its best to Wonderful. completely exterminate I mean, everybody who belongs to another religious group or religious interpretation of the same religion, etc., etc. This has just been the, the, the common direction in which all fucking <laughs> states have gone in since inception of religion, <laughs> okay? And because the Marxists during those same eras of, let's call it misinterpretation to an extent, uh, might have dedicated themselves to a similar cause was a direct consequence of just how religious organizations treated each other. And the so-called atheist project adapted that to itself and then, quote unquote, oppressed others, even though very much so in the Soviet Union arg argument can be made that the very groups that the Orthodox ma majority was oppressing were liberated because the Orthodox hierarchy was no longer allowed to hold so much state power. They ban religion. They have the Moscow church trials. They blow up churches. They jail priests, right? Um, you know, the, the Solzhenitsyn writes in the Gulag Archipelago, they put nuns in special sections of the Gulag with prostitutes. Yes, right. Right, right deem right, them right. horse yes, to Christ. absolutely. Lenin said, all worship of a divinity is a necrophilia. There is nothing more abominable than religion. Yeah. So they they don't just try to stop religion. They, they want... Um, Pol Pot, the Buddhist monks in Cambodia, yeah. to renounce their vows, yeah, yeah. to marry. Pol Pot mentioned, we just need Vuvuzela. And, oh, we had 100 billion. We had Pol Pot. We had Satanism. Can't wait for the next hot take. It's not enough for them to be quiet. And so well, after I don't, four I don't years, know how you can separate a militantly anti-religious atheism from, from especially, say, within a Christian context, from something approximate satanic ideology. Yeah, because right. I, don't see how, I don't see how conceptually that separation is possible. It's one thing to be atheist in the manner that leaves people to go to hell in a handbasket in their own way, but to be... I would love to ask these guys what they think about, for example, the complete annihilation and mass murder of Native Americans and their religious beliefs by the so-called enlightened Christian Europeans. 
I, I mean, I know what they're going to say. I, all non-monotheistic religions are the fact to worship of the devil and therefore must be annihilated at its boot, <laughs> at its core. But let's not talk about this. Thank you, Ramka Bits. Scary communists are persecuting priests, uh, the poor church that owned fucking whole villages and carried out a fuckload of administrative tasks of the state. Yeah. And I myself, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Orthodox Christian. I'm an Orthodox Christian. And what was done to the majority of those in power in the Orthodox Church, both in, in the Balkans and, and in Russia, including also the Catholics and, and yes, and the Muslims, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking about two, those, two, two of those cases were absolutely, to a very large extent, on point because they were directly linked to the sources of power and to capital. But then that was taken in, on stage steroids and for example examples like Afghanistan were absolutely disgusting where the local communists like were fucking I don't know burning Qurans which even they completely uh, forgetting about liberal moral sensitivities or respect of the other etc etc were just strategically imbecilic and that allowed the United States to quite literally repitch communism and never talk about enlightened aspects of it when it comes to the discussion of class for example and only hyper fixate on Hey, if the communists come, they're going to take your cross, which allowed for, well, uh, a lot of people to be dissuaded in their belief of uh, Marxism, not even dissuaded in their belief to, they were dissuaded from even engaging in it at all, at all. It is one of the greatest L's of socialists ever to completely, like, it's none of your business, man. Like, spirituality is its own thing. Don't fuck with that. Just, just don't fuck with that. Think about it, whatever you, you want to think, because it is always going to be a secular state, But um, and socialism should always be secular, but let people worship whoever they want. Actually, an enemy of the religious enterprise. Mm -hmm. That's a purge. whole different thing. It is. So, yeah. and, and that obviously, Marx and the communists were obviously that, clearly, obviously. And, and, so, and, 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 and Satan might say, I don't care if you believe in me or not, you're doing my work, man. I yeah, mean, well, that is shutting that all, down churches, well, blowing up churches. It also that also touches on the issue. I'm supposed to take these guys seriously while they're talking about Satan as a dude that's like, yeah, man, I fuck with the communists because they'd be blowing up churches. Like these are supposed to be like serious academics, and they'd be like, my boy Satan was speaking through the communists to blow up the churches. Comparatively harmless, who toys with ritualistic satanic activities in a sort of dramatic manner, mm -hmm. and then you can imagine someone who tortures nuns and priests and burns down churches, but forgoes any technical affiliation with Satan. Right. I would say that the- Yeah, and you think the same God that you believe in fucking loves that there are currently millions of children digging up fucking lithium so the rest of us can have fucking iPhones. You think God likes capitalism, the same God you respect so much? You think the Christian God likes capitalism? Think he fucks with capitalism, whose very son, the only, all, almost the only time in the fucking Bible, the only time when he engages in one of the only times in active violence is when he's beating the shit out of capitalists that have gathered outside of a temple. If we want to talk about not following God's path, what is a hyper exploitative mechanism that causes the death of unironically 20 plus million people every year just from starvation, just from starvation. Okay, if we agree, okay, Mark Satanic. How are capitalists not? Jesus Christ. The latter is the, yeah. the Satanist in a much deeper sense than the former. That's Not right. that what the former is doing is excusable. Yeah, or at least satanic. Yes, right. But right. but to 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 do what the communists did to the religious <laughs> enterprise is evidence of something far more militant than a mere atheism. Oh God, Jesus lost his shit on the moneylenders. Yeah. The Bible is very anti-capitalist in parts. Yes, it is. Look at what the Christmas capitalism has brought us. Talk, talk to me about a, a incredibly disgusting <laughs> misinterpretation of the birthday of what was what is supposed to be human and deity mixage, which is which is the Lord Jesus Christ introducing to us that have everything to do with everything except the right of one man to exploit another. And then look at what Christmas is today. If there is any fucking 
symbolism about the continuous and absolute annihilation of uh, quote-unquote core Christian principles, it is the way we celebrate Christmas today, which is buy shit, consume many things. He only gives a fuck about praising some fictitious guy he defines as Satan, but gives absolutely no fucks about literally the OG of gods, the only one who that matters today, the one at whose altar the vast majority of people pray and to whose altar they have rejected their previous gods, and that is money. Good old money. More and more and more. And eat and consume and get and eat and consume and get. The antithesis to everything that most monotheistic religions tell us is the worst direction we can go in as a society. The altar of capital. But he never talks about it because he doesn't give a fuck about the misinterpret the, the the abandonment of God. If he cared about the abandonment of God, then <laughs> this would be something that he screams about on the daily. But no, this man cares and worships the same God of capital and therefore cannot find it in himself to criticize him. <sighs> Subscribe! Subscribe or maybe Yoda gets it! Subscribe or maybe Yoda gets it! Do you want Baby Yoda to live? You must subscribe. <laughs>